Jeez, I, I, I just don't have enough of this. Hello. Hello. I forgot I turned this on. <laughs> oh, whoa, why is my mic so loud? Oh, that could be why. There we go. That sounds a little bit better. I have to get the proper seating distance. Hello, folks. Welcome back. To the Hobo and, and, and Hobo <laughs> Wrestling Show. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about Survivor Series. And the reason why they call it Survivor Series, if you survive this show, you are a survivor. Because while this show was not good, there were points, there were high points to it. Don't get me wrong, any show there's always high points. Very few and far between. And they had a couple of mystery matches. But they did not list online. Boo WWE. You the finger wag. Because you did not do what you're supposed to do. And therefore it left me confused. Um, overall. I'll talk about that. That was War Game though. War Games! Oh wow, Roller Games was only that long? Wait a second. That doesn't make sense. I don't I didn't take any notes about that. Oh wow. Yeah, I see here. Destroy that because I don't need this. Um, all the things about Survivor Series, and I didn't pay for it. Again, there were, as always, like with any wrestling match, high points and low points. And unfortunately, the low points really came through. And why is that? Okay. And also, they kept score. And I'll get into that score relatively soon. Um, see here. So just let, let let me let me let me speak about Survivor Series. Yeah, that doesn't sound as good as War Games. Survivor Series. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. First of all, it was a two-hour pre-show. A two-hour pre-show. Is way too long for any show. Although they did try to fill in a whole bunch of stuff, which I'll give them some credit for. Actually, I think the pre show, for the most part, was better than parts of the main show. That's not good. Um, so it starts off, you have a lot of talking. Whoa, JBL got old all of a sudden. How isn't Adam Cole dead? Adam Cole, baby! Dead. Um, I'm just waiting to see the rib tape. They're, like, they're, like, I'll, I'll lead up to it, but if there wasn't any rib tape, and they never get the rib tape right, because rib tape actually does absolutely nothing. And they always put the rib tape around the stomach. They wish on a thin guy like Adam Cole. You can actually see where his ribs are. I don't know. But we start off the pre-show with a tag team battle royal. This was actually kind of fun to watch. I'm always a fan of battle royals. Seriously, so the, um, the tag team battle royal, we have the club, revival, forgotten sons, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, Street Profits, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, Brizango, Lucha House Party, Imperium, and Heavy Machinery. 
So actually, yeah, it was a ten, it was actually pretty cool. And I want to know where where's Alex Wolf because Imperium was let out by Alter. And did Heavy Machinery change their music? I didn't hear the typical backup sounds. And what happened to the Usos? I miss the Usos too. Hope they come back soon. Uh, so let's see here. I shall talk about who gets eliminated first. So the whole thing, again, it starts off as a brawl. Eventually the Forgotten Sons get eliminated. Then Lucha Underground. Then Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Imperium gets eliminated fairly early too. Then Heavy Machinery? The heck are they doing? Then Brizango. Then the Revival. Then the Club. Then the Street Profits. And I'll lead up to so, so those are all. So obviously you can do. You can figure out who won. Um, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode won. And actually, they were keeping score. And I just have the final tally. Well, I'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, Ziggler, he was wrestling with a hat on. That was, that was funny to see. Uh, <laughs> uh, Otis had one of the members of the Revival up on the ropes. They were like hanging upside down. Otis hit him like squarely right in the ass. The bottom part of the ass with like a clubbing blow. That's just funny. Uh, what else was there? Ziggler. Oh, I'll tell you what. Then there was the, the headbutt. Ooh, that headbutt was pretty cool. Uh, Robert Roode's a smart wrestler. Again, <laughs> Otis, he was shaking his hips. And he missed on the caterpillar. Whoa. And then eventually, of course, with the exit of Brizongo. <laughs> Brizongo was done. No more NXT. Uh, then, and so the final wrestlers was, was Rude and Ziggler and the Street Profits. Rude has such an amazing spine buster. He, he has like the second best spine buster only behind Arn Anderson. I had to think about that for a second. And for this, the whole theme was it's going to be NXT versus Raw versus SmackDown. SmackDown wins! So, so therefore, it's all of a sudden... One. Nothing. Oops. And then the next match was a three-way for the cruiserweight belt. And I guess Angel Garza wrestled in uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott and Leo Rush wrestled in the dark match. At War Games. Oh, wait a second. Before I go into all that, I'll tell you what. I'm always a fan of Battle Royals. This was a ham sandwich. Mainly because it is just a Battle Royal. That was a fun, it's, it's a really fun way to kick off the show, though. You should always open up shows with Battle Royals. They're fun. Or Royal Rumbles, whatever. Actually, Battle Royals with the exception of the Royal Rumble. That's fun. Um, so, again, that was a ham sandwich of the match. And then uh, we get into the, the uh, cruiserweight three way te uh, three, uh, three, three, three way battle. It was Akira Tozawa, Kalisto, and Leo Rush. Leo Rush first being the champion. He defended his belt, I guess, successfully against Isaiah Swerve, Scott, and Angel Garza. For the dark matches on War Games. Uh, with this one, it's pretty fun. For the most part, the main roster begins to team up on Leo Rush. 
And all of a sudden, once Leo rushes out of the picture, Akira's out goes after Kalisto. Smart. Uh, eventually, they, everyone tries to fly, but then everyone gets kicked in the head for their efforts. So that's not something different. Uh, Kalisto <laughs> stole that, that rope that rope jump from Ray Phoenix, though. Gimmick infringement on you, Kalisto. Again, he can jump and do everything that Ray Phoenix can. Except for they except for they say Ray Phoenix do whatever you wanted to. Vince is like, no! You can't jump off the ropes. It's not believable. It's not wrestling. It, that kind of is a... Um, then there was... Then I'll tell you what, there was an amazing spot. It was a double top rope Spanish fly. And I have no idea who got the worst of it. Because at one time, all three men were on top of the rope. Uh, it was Akira Tozawa, Leo Rush in the middle, Kalisto on the other side. I don't know what what that was. It just looked like a Spanish fly. It looked like everyone's back got destroyed. Akira Tozawa and Neil has such an amazing German suplex. And that and and what happened? So he had Leo Rush and the German suplex. Kalisto runs up him, goes into the alligator clutch, goes for the pin. I don't know how Akira Tozawa does this, but he gets that super high sent on. Um, he lands that on Kalisto. Fortunately, Leo Rush gets involved. Leo Rush does the six star. No, it's the uh, Man of the Hour Splash. Yeah. W whatever Leo Rush calls the, fro the, the five star frog splash. And it was fun. Uh, Leo Rush retains his belt. Another good, actually better match. This was a cheeseburger match. And now we have. Let's see here. NXT one. Wait a second. Wrong hand. No. Nope. Let's see here. Technical difficulties. And SmackDown one. Yeah. Whatever. So it's 1-1 one, one between Raw and SmackDown. Pretty good start. Then the next match, I can't believe they bumped these team sounds to the pre-show. We had you know, triple, threat, triple threat rules with tag team. So you had three people in the ring. It was the New Day. Oh, don't you dare be sour. Versus an undisputed era. And then, of course, you had war, 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 war. The Viking Raiders. That was fun. The champions of, again, all three divisions, New Day, who hold the SmackDown tag belt. Undisputed era, who are, who are NXT champions. And... War, war, raw, raw, raw. The Viking Raiders are the raw champions. And I'll tell you what, uh, I was semi disappointed a little bit only because one, both members of the Undisputed Era, everyone in the Undisputed Era, they should have all the rib tape. Um, Kyle Riley <laughs> and Bobby Fish, they're just, they're just so funny. They just, they, they, they just look, look dead after the Viking Raiders and knew they had their way with them. And then Big E gets Ivar up somehow in a body slam. Ivar's a big dude. Uh, then the Undisputed Era do what they typically do. They low bridge Big E. Big E goes flying over the top. Then the, eventually, again, when New Day get their comeback, they have the classic double team after the tag. Oh, it's so good to watch. <laughs> They did the um, and, and then it was a hockey fight for a while between New Day and Viking Raiders. They just like grab each other, just 
and you know, like like they just grab grab each other and say, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. And the, and and then the other guy, of course, just grabs him and starts punching. So a hockey fight happens at a wrestling match. Uh, undisputed error again. They do. They all. They are. They also have the, the double team. Uh, it, some of this was like uh, such a good chain wrestling. And when uh, Biggie's leg was no, it was Kofi Kingston's leg. They put his leg outside the ring. Fish did a dragon screw leg drip. Leg. Uh, no, Kyle Wright did the, the dragon screw leg toss to the. Um, with his leg in the between the ropes, that actually looked pretty painful. Then Kyle Riley came off the top, dropped the knee on the same leg, and then he did a heel hook. So I do like the fact that they were chain wrestling. Uh, what else? Biggie's just Biggie. Uh, the Viking Raiders eventually they eventually take everyone out, and whenever Kyle Riley's really selling being punched, he just looks punch drunk all the time. Like when Kyle Riley's in the midst of selling, he's just like all punchy, all punchy, drunk looking. He's so good. Uh, Bobby, Bobby Fish again. He's smart. He chops block the back of Ivar's legs again. You always take out the legs of the big guy. And Kyle Riley, he did that amazing standing leg lock. That was pretty cool. <laughs> the undisputed era when they were in control. I heard, I heard. Okay, time to go home. Uh, Kofi Kingston. Eventually gets caught because he goes off the top rope. He gets caught by Eric uh, Biggie. He does belly to belly to everyone, mainly mainly the undisputed era. Kofi Kingston, Big E did their double team move on Eric. Uh, Kofi got hit by total elimination. The undisputed era seemed to be the smart of the two teams. Still, they got crushed. Viking Raiders win. So now. It is NXT one, Raw one, SmackDown one. Wait a second, let's for NXT. There we go. Ah, uh, close enough. You get what I'm doing. And then finally, the main show started. Because I'll tell you what, they had an interview with Sami Zayn. He's Sami Zayn. He's pretty cool. But that match, I'll tell you what, that was an, I thought it was an amazing match. That was a good surf and turf quality match. And then they had, they start off Survivor Series proper with the women's. Survivor Series match for Team SmackDown. It was Sasha Banks, Nikki Cross, Lacey Evans, Dana Brooke, and Carmella. For Raw, it was woo, Charlotte Flair, Sarah Logan, Natalia Neidhart, Asuka, and Kyrie Sane. I wonder if I won because so many people turned on so many. Well, uh, I'll deal with that later. And for NXT, we had Rhea Ripley, Tony Storm, Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, and Candice LeRae. And <laughs> Kyrie Sane looks confused, mainly because she sees Io Shirai on the opposite side. She's still wearing her health. It's pretty fun. Uh, so it starts off uh, Tony Storm, Lacey Evans, and Sarah Logan start off. Eventually, Nikki Cross comes in. Nikki Cross is Nikki Cross. Thank you, Nikki Cross. You're the one person that saved this match for a while, at least. Then it's Kyrie Sane and Io Chai, and they just stare at each other. They're like, what, what are you doing over there? What are you doing over there? And Carmella's like, I'm here! I'm here! In the background. Carmella, Carmella needs to learn how to shut up and just let the two people stare at each other. Uh, eventually, they, they, they get sick of Carmella's insistence about being a part of this match. Beat up Carmella. And eventually tags out Io Shirai, Kyrie Sane, stare each other again. And no, Dana Brooke just stares at him. Dana Brooke's smart, though. She doesn't say anything, she just hangs out in the back. She, she, she tranquilos. Yep, I'll let you ladies sort things out. 
Dana, Dana Brooke can fly. Dana Brooke has gotten so much better. Dana Brooke is so cute looking too. Uh, Lorraine eventually comes in. She beats up Lacey Evans. And everyone gets their own little spot. Uh, Sasha Banks, again, she, she stands tall in this. And then there was some splash. Candice LeRae and Io Shirai looked dead. They were holding their wrists. There was medical staff. The referees didn't know what to do. The referees looked absolutely confused. Everyone else in the ring looked absolutely confused. Either this is a really good work, or this was a shoot. Because I actually couldn't tell. But I, I, I want to say it was a shoot. Because they actually had the medical staff there, like real medical staff, not WWE medical, like not just the referees attending to them. And the other wrestlers were like, "Huh? What? What happened?" Like, like they looked at each other, just like, "Well, aren't we supposed to?" I mean, I thought they were. What do we do now? So they looked just utterly confused. Um, Nikki again eventually beats up. All of NXT because she's Nikki Cross. However, Nikki Cross is the first eliminated. Uh, then, uh, after some, some more gossiping in the ring, Logan, uh, Sarah Logan's eliminated. Uh, Carmel does her quick ping things and, and screams. She's eliminated. Carrie Singh gets eliminated. So, Asuka comes in his clean house. Asuka eliminates Dana Brooke. And Charlotte, who was, who was going to be feuding with Asuka now, gets green misted. Then Oscar just leaves. So technically, Raw should have won. They still had one person standing. That was Oscar. She just left. She missed it, Charlotte. That was amazing. Lacey Evans was upset because she has a screen miss all over her now. So she's eliminated next. Then we have Tony Storm getting eliminated. So it winds up being Natalia, uh, Natalia Sasha Banks. Taking on uh, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair. Then Bianca Belair gets eliminated. Then Natty's eliminated by, by a sucker punch. And then all of a sudden it got weird because then, like, Io Shirai and Kenneth Ray, like just came back and, and beat Sasha Banks. Actually, if they wouldn't have done that, I probably would have won this. I would have upped my rating. So, it was a really weird wonky end because everyone's like, what are you doing here? The referee's like, no, you're, you're, the, you, you're, you're kicked out. You're like not cleared to wrestle. Because obviously someone screwed something up. And I actually didn't realize that you could screw up a Survivor Series match until I saw this particular garbage fire. Yes, this match was uh, NXT one because Rhea Ripley rip tighted Sasha Banks and this garbage fire. It's a can of soup match. This means NXT three. Raw and SmackDown just won. Yeah. And that match, I don't think I've ever said this about any Survivor Series match. That was a can of soup. I don't know. I mean, if they weren't hurt that bad, they just should have stayed there and done nothing. But the fact that they did that, everyone looked confused. They had like no idea what was going on. I don't know if that was like a last minute call. Who knows? It's over and done with an in history book. Ooh. And in the history book, it belongs to the point where this is where I'm like, 
it's time for me to start drinking. Oh, that is good. So we had the next match, we had Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Roderick Strong versus AJ Styles. This was actually a lot better. Um, they did mention the history between AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura from Japan. Obviously referencing New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, Roderick Strong, so many ways to bend and, and break the back. Can he use him aside the back breakers? However, AJ Styles... He is the messiah of the neck breaker and forearms and everything else probably wrestling. Um, again, AJ Styles, again, very smart. It goes against the, uh, the strong strikes against Shinsuke Nakamura. This was actually a lot better than the WrestleMania match, especially when Roderick Strong was in there because at least there were no nut kicks. Um, AJ Styles got monkey flimped into Shinsuke Nakamura. That was actually pretty fun. And I'll tell you what. I have a question for you folks. I know at one time, Roderick Strong was in Ring of Honor. AJ, AJ Styles was in Ring of Honor. And Shinsuke Nakamura, when working with New Japan, might have come over in some collaboration work with Ring of Honor. I wonder if these three ever met each other in Ring of Honor. Just a thought. <laughs> then, I like how this was phrased in Discord. There was the Tower of Mild Peril, where AJ had Roderick Strong in the electric chair position, and then Shinsuke Nakamura came by with like a flying knee to him from the top rope. Again, the Tower of Mild Peril. Uh, Shinsuke... Wow. He he just... I don't know what it was either. He wasn't sure what to do because he just stared at the ref to see to figure out when he wanted how to kick out for the three count. Uh, what else? Shinsuke, he had, he had the reverse headlock take down. That looked good. And then there was a Kinshasa. Then it was Shinsuke versus AJ Styles again. Not without Roderick Strong, we got into... New Japan, some New Japan style wrestling. Uh, Roderick Strong, however, is very opportunistic. And after AJ Styles hit the phenomenal form on Shinsuke Nakamura, it looked like AJ Styles was going to win. Roderick Strong pulled AJ Styles out of the ring, covered Shinsuke Nakamura himself. Roderick Strong wins. And now it becomes NXT 4. Raw 1, SmackDown 1. So again, they actually actually kept track of stuff. Then we had The Miz and Daniel Bryan. And, and that match, I'll tell you what, it was fun. It, well, triple threat matches are always hard to judge because they tend to be a clus cluster mess. But I'll tell you what, this was a good cheeseburger match. Then it was Miz and Nail and Brian in the back. And then it was Keith Dunn versus Adam Cole, baby! Boom! And I was kind of happy because at least Adam Cole wore the rib tape. He doesn't wear the rib tape well. He wears it around his stomach. And halfway through the match, it kind of scrunches up. Again, rib tape really doesn't do anything. It looks great. But they never tape it up right because they always tape around the stomach, not the ribs. And with someone small like Adam Cole, you can actually see where his ribs are. And the other thing that, that kind of disappointed me, even though this was an amazing match, is they didn't show any shots of Britt Baker in the crowd. I thought Adam Cole for sure was dead. Darn it. I thought I had a shot at Britt Baker. Um, and again, Adam Cole should have should have had more rib tape and he should not have been running the ropes the most skillful way that he does with bad ribs because ribs means you can't breathe and that sucks uh, Peter Dunn of course goes for all the joint manipulations he bends the hand bends the wrist, bends the elbow uh, and then 
Adam Cole again. He does the rope running and realizes that Peter Dunn has a taped up knee. A weak point. So he goes after the knee. Um, Peter Dunn <laughs> does a double finger stomp. That's so good. And then Adam Cole had a shoulder break on, on Pete Dunn, which is pretty cool. Again, Cole kicks out of an X-Plex. I think twice, once he was by the ropes. Uh, Peter Dune, uh, he, oh, he then actually Adam Cole hit that Panama Sunrise on the hard, on the second hardest part of the ring, which is the ring apron. They both fall out. I don't know if it was planned or it probably was planned, but Adam Cole kicked the mouthpiece out of Peter Dune's mouth. He went to go pick it up. Adam Cole just stepped on his hand, kicked it around. Um, threw him into the middle of the ring, hit the final shot. And I'll tell you what, I'm just kind of happy that they didn't mention, it's like, they're all beat up from, from war games. But at some parts, it's like, war games actually happen? But at least this actually made it look like it happened. I'll tell you what, this was probably the best match of the night. This was a good quality surf and surf match. And because this was NXT versus NXT, nothing happened. Then we had Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend. Of course. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tim. AEW sucks. I love when fans bring signs I can read. Uh, so, Daniel Bryan comes in. He, he just jumps the Fiend when he gets in. Daniel Bryan tries. Fiend, for the most part, is in control of the match. Tosses Bryan around. Daniel Bryan does try all the heavy stuff. He goes to the top rope splash at the outside, which he has to be very careful of. Um, the yes kicks. The Fiend, however, no, no sells it. Eventually, uh, Daniel Bryan then tries to stomp on the head. He only gets a two count. Uh, the Fiend kicks out of a knee plus, and then from the top rope, when Daniel Bryan's jumping down, hit the mandible claw, and he gets pinned by said mandible claw because he passes out with his shoulders on the mat. It was a, it was it was, it was good enough. Um, it definitely told the story about how the Fiend is this menacing boogeyman character, and even Daniel Bryan with all his wrestling skills can't beat him. It was, it was fun. The crowd was really into it. And therefore, I'm into it. Therefore, this is a cheeseburger match. And this is where you think they made the mistake. The big mistake. And this was just a booking wrestling order thing. Um, then they had the men's. Survivor Series match. That's what I was thinking of. So on Team Raw, we had Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Ricochet, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. SmackDown was Roman Reigns, Mustafa Ali, Shorty G, Baron Corbin, Braun Strowman. And for NXT, it was Ciampa, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, Damian Priest, and Walter. Oh... When Walter's name was announced, he was so tickled to be there. Like he, like like the crowd was chanting, "Walter, Walter," and and he, you could see him visibly smile. He was just like, "Wow, this is a big show." You, you could tell he was he was just soaking on him. For for people who were bask in his glory, or. Oh, bask in Walter's glory. Oh, bask in Walter's glory. Uh, let's see a little bit about this. Seth Braun, Ciampa start off the match. Eventually, they just try to double team Braun. Um, and then all the big men get in there. It was Braun, Damian Priest, and Walter. And then, unfortunately, Walter was the first eliminated. So the order of eliminations was Walter, Shorty G, Kevin Owens, 
Damian Priest, Randy Orton, Matt Riddell, Braun Strowman, Ricochet, Mustafa Ali. And the Braun one I'm not happy about. Um, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Ciampa, Seth, and then I'll get to the final two. You can kind of figure out. Uh, Roman Reigns eventually got tagged in too. Uh, a very collegiate match between Matt Riddle and Shorty G. Whoa. That was some good stuff. Whenever I see a collegiate Whenever I see pro wrestlers doing collegiate stuff like they were doing, it always makes me smile. It makes me feel fuzzy, warm inside. I I can really appreciate it's. They're not fighting. They're wrestling now. I like that. Uh, Roman he gets in there. Corbin tags himself in. Orton and Ciampa tear each other down. That was amazing. Um, someone did the finger snap to someone else. That was pretty cool. Priest got the RKO. Orton was the victim of a roll-up. Braun Strowman, like, just, when he did his little run-around thing, like, Neil Chomp, it looked like Chomp just died. Keith Lee, wow, Braun Strowman tried to do it again. <laughs> and Keith Lee tried to I know, fun spot. Actually, you probably want to hang the words of that. Ricochet's flying is so fast and so fun. Uh, I think the only problem with this is that Braun Strowman got counted out. I didn't think he could get counted out in a survival series match. But again, this was really fun. Uh, Roman was cursing. What the F are you doing? To Baron Corbin. Obviously, they don't know what they're, they're talking about. Champa, he's confused because he just watches, he just watches Roman and Corbin play each other, which is fine. Keith Lee just pounces everyone after a while. There's a product Champa that's really good. I'll tell you what, this was a lot better than the Women's Survivor Series match by like degrees. Uh, when there was a count out, of course the whole crowd started bullshit, bullshit. And of course, when Keithy was in, oh, bask in his glory. Oh, bask in his glory. Uh, then it was a slingshot splash. It was fun. There was a Bosch three count there because eventually at the end, it was Roman Reigns taking on Keith Lee. The referee counted three. But Keith Lee did not kick out in time. Keith Lee probably needs to watch the ref. Even though he tries to be super professional, I don't think he's quite there yet. But there was a botch three on that. Roman Reigns actually did get spirit bombed, but he actually did kick out before the three. Like the two the two point eight, whatever, two point nine. But he, but he actually did kick out. Even Nigel says, Yeah, he 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 did kick out. Um Keith Lee eventually eats the spear and gets pinned. And then in a, in a thing of showman, in a thing of um, respect, the fist bump. The, the fist bump. Boom! That leads us to now NXT 3, Raw 1, and SmackDown 2. So, everything hinges on the next match. And for SmackDown, it all hinged on Bailey. Oh, I will say this. This Survivor Series match, this was fun, though. This was another good surf and turf match. Actually, it's not that match. It's next. But then we had... Rey Mysterio taking on Brock Lesnar. This was fun. Becky did some like bad promo in the back. And I don't know. This, this was fun. Rey Mysterio eventually, he, first thing he does, he goes for the pipe. Smart, smart, smart. Um, then they run outside the ring a little bit. Brock Lesnar gets back in. Nails Rey Mysterio. 
uh, kicks the pipe away. Brock Lesnar is firmly in control. But then he starts kicking the pipe towards Rey Mysterio. Eventually, Brock Lesnar does pick up the pipe. Uh, Dominic comes in. Oh, also the poor Spanish announce table, because when they were on the outside, Brock Lesnar just threw him through the threw him over the Spanish announce, announce table. Put him through the Spanish announce table survivor series kind of like like sign on their table. Um he gets tossed back in the ring. He gets Sherman suplex on the pipe. Uh, Dominic Ray's son comes in with a towel. Brock looks at him, laughs, takes the towel, throws it out. Ray low blows Brock Lesnar. Oh, Brock Lesnar stole that. And then Dominic low blow. Dominic's low blow is a little less a little less impactful because you really can see where he hit like 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 well he hit like Brock Lesnar right above the knee on the inner thigh. But still Brock Lesnar. Sir, you did an amazing job of selling that because that looked really good though. Um, that really just they then they then Dominic and his father Amos here hit a six one nine. Um, and I'll tell you what, Dominic's actually a pretty decent wrestler. He's gonna be a good. He's gonna be a good wrestler one day. He had a, a five star frog splash. Chase <laughs> Eddie Guerrero <laughs> is really Eddie's son. Um, eventually Brock kicks out, and then Brock's just pissed off. He destroys. Uh, he gets up. Dominic goes up. He tries. He, he climbs up the top rope. Brock Lesnar catches him. German suplexes him. Uh, Ray goes up to the top rope. Ray jumps onto Brock. Brock, Brock catches him. F fives him. Brock just looked pissed off. He F fives him. Match over. This was good. Again, I also predict this this match. Kind of the way that this would go. It was a good cheeseburger match. At this stage of his career, neither Brock Lesnar nor Rey Mysterio are five are five star machines. But again, it, it, it was a heck of a lot better than than what showed up. In fact, I, oh no. I needed that. Then they had the women's triple threat match: Becky Lynch versus Bailey versus Shayna Baszler. Boring. What was that I heard? Boring. Yeah, the booking of this was terrible because they just start off the brawl. Bocce Bailey. She tried to do a suplex onto the corner. But it was way too close in the corner because whatever happened, her feet got caught up. She must have picked that up from Sasha Botch. Um, I do like Bailey's new music. When Bailey came in, she was wearing like some Egyptian uh, head thing. I don't know. That wasn't good. The music was good. This was a really slow pace. Plotting, clunky match. The crowd was dead. Um, Becky Lynch kind of like spent half the time outside the ring. We'll get into Becky Lynch soon. <laughs> it's never good when I say it that way either. Uh, Shannon Baser eventually does put Bailey in into the rear naked choke. I have no idea what she calls it. It's a rear naked choke, though. Uh, Bailey. I think taps out. She doesn't. She doesn't pass out. Becky Lynch was on the outside. She got beat up a lot. Um, Shannon Baszler wins, and therefore we have our points. NXT wins Survivor Series four to one to two. Bailey Smackdown did not need you. You could have stayed at home. So, I'll kind of semi-stop here. Uh, this match was a real can of soup. I think Omelette Spot here 
and I have a larger repertoire of wrestling skills than probably all three of those women maybe combined. Or at least I could fake it really good. I know my wrestling s skills would be better than Bailey's and, and, and Shayna Baszler's. Uh, you throw Becky in there, yeah, maybe. Um, eventually, Shayna Baszler goes out, she stands on top of the table, says, yes, I'm the best. Becky eventually gets gets on, not knocks her off of it. And Be Becky needs to wear padding up top. Because Becky was cursing and, and, and Becky was aroused at something. If not, it was really cold in that stadium. If you know what I'm talking about. Something, two, 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 two little things. Uh, the two things by her her, her, her chest were, were poking out. So Seth, I guess I'll give you the thumbs up. And that was just seeing the close up there. That was the only thing that saved this match. Even the fans couldn't help this match because they tried to sing. Ten people tried to sing, and that was it. Um, eventually, for my predictions, I got 4.5 out of 8 right, but I figured I didn't factor in to the matches. So therefore, I was a 50-50 booker. And then next week, next week's Thanksgiving week, strong Thanksgiving week. So there's going to be a video Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, and I think I've started off. And I forget if there's a triple, I forget if there's a triple A pay per view or not on the first. So that was it. Um, Survivor Series on a whole, a ham sandwich. Glad I didn't have to pay for it. Glad I have my hobo means of watching professional wrestling. That was it. Again, if you agree or disagree with me, you can always do a comment or email. Um, and if you do leave a comment or email, I have to check my emails eventually. You do get a little dedicated, little video dedication for you. And in the case of, because actually. I got them done. Dan Blaze and Bumflix has their own character now in the Daytona Beach Bumfight League. Again, you, you respond often enough, you get your own character in the Daytona Beach Bumfight League, which you'll be seeing Thursday for, for Drunksgiving Day. Oh, Thanksgiving Day. I mean. Or Drunksgiving. Same thing. Everyone else, have a good night. I have to go hobo and get my laundry finished. Bye. Yes, Summer uh, Survivor Series it was so fun. I decided to do my laundry, trade papers, and wrap Christmas gifts.